So today, I want to tell you a little story that's very dear to me about Dick Racy. Not to be confused with Dick Tracy. I'm not talking about Dick Tracy. Nothing to do with Dick Tracy. Dick Racy is completely separate, even though he's kind of similar. So anyway, <clears throat> Dick Racy, you know, well, they were encountering a spate of, like, female villains in his whatever metropolis. He's taken it upon himself to validate his identity by protecting. And... You know, they had these terrible, I mean, each one of these lady villains was more diabolical than the last because they've been screwed over so much by society, they become monsters. And now Dick has to clean up, you know, you know, everything that happens because of the society created these monsters because he's like a janitor for society's waste. <clears throat> so... You know, like, like, you know, you know, like, you know, many times, you know, sort of like, you know, like law enforcement, you know. No, that's not, you know, sometimes law enforcement saves the day, but come on, their attitude sucks overall. Okay, so, and that's my opinion. So anyway, I just want to say that, like, you know, Dick Racy was out there doing custodial work. You know, from the from the shit society didn't want to deal with because, you know, they like to pretend they're good and don't want to be reminded that they have, you know, areas of improvement because they don't want to really fundamentally question anything. And, you know, Dick almost got killed a couple of times. I mean, the last one with the woman whose father was, was shot by, you know, had an African-American father, got shot by police. You know, and I watched him die right in front of her while the policeman laughed and, you know, holstered a smoking pistol and swaggered his little pot belly and says, That's right, little girl, that's what happens when your daddy doesn't obey the law. And so then she became completely fucked up in the head in every possible way from that. And then Dick Racy came and took her out like a piece of garbage because, after all, she was jeopardizing innocence. So... You know, you know, Dick Racy was, was just sitting by himself and he goes, shit, you know, things are getting pretty tough. And I think I need another, yet another weapon to give me an edge. So he thought about it. Okay, well, I already have like, you know, the exploding, you know, molder in my mouth. And, you know, I already have the my shoulder holster and I already have my ankle holster. Plus I have my butt blade that I keep stuck up my ass. And I also have the blade in my, you know, in my shoes. What, what, you know, and I also have my Desert Eagle. What more could I possibly, I have my little watch. What more could I possibly need? And he thought, and he thought, and then he, he got on the internet and, and he chatted with his friends and visited a couple forums. He went into the dark web and he, he, he bumbled around there and, and, and then he slept on it for a couple days and then, like, his handler called him in the middle of the night, and go right around like, you know, and said, what are you gonna do, Dick? What are you gonna do? And that's when it hit him. It just hit him right then. He said, I'm going to have a cock gun. Now don't get all freaked out, okay? Cause I'm talking about like a rooster, you know, like, you know how like, I didn't know this, but you know how like they're chickens? Well, apparently, they're guy chickens too. I didn't know this, but they're actually guy chickens. And they call like guy chickens roosters. They don't look anything like chickens. Isn't that weird? It's like they're two different species, but apparently a rooster is like a guy chicken. I didn't know that. It's like, wow. So I'm talking about that when I talk about a cock gun. So anyway, um, he had, you know, said, so I'm going to get myself a cock gun. So what he did is he went to this special scientist who like, you know, does cybernetic surgery and plastic surgery. And they talked for like, they were up all late into the middle of the night drinking, you know, black coffee and everything. And in the end, they finally decided that they were gonna mount, a, you know, a gun rail and they were gonna strap it with iron, okay? And it was gonna go over his shaft, okay? And clamp with iron, okay? To make all the veins bulge and everything. And then on that, they were gonna have a pick tinny rail, okay? Where, to, you know, and a little gun mount. And then on that, they're gonna put the barrel and, you know, the trigger. And then on that, it was gonna have a little laser aimer device and a little flashlight and a little, you know, and they didn't put a scope because they figured, you know, that's not, they're not gonna need a scope. So anyway, like, you know, and they put that all on there and it could like do anywhere from like 22, 38, and they were gonna put 44 on there, but it, it didn't work out. 
So basically, it, they maxed out at 38, and they wanted to do the 9mm, but they were having problems because that's a supersonic bullet. <clears throat> so for the time being, there he is, and he has his 38 cock gun. And no one knows it's there because it's completely concealed. And though it does make his bulge a little bigger, and I did add another 7 inches just to make it more feasible for the whole thing to work. So anyway, there he's out there and he's fighting crime and sure enough, the next femme fatale comes down. This one was the spawn of a mother who got raped by Weinberg. So anyway, <laughs> this woman comes out and she's just completely deranged and fucked up in every possible way because society has screwed her and fucked her mercilessly since before she was born and fucked her mother and her whole family too. And now she's troubled. And because she's troubled, we have to take her out like a piece of trash to protect the innocents. So anyway, he's out there doing his job to take her out like a piece of trash. And it turns out she gets to drop on him. How could that have happened? And now he's handcuffed into a bed. And he's, you know, his ankles are handcuffed to the bedpost. His, his wrists are handcuffed to the bedpost. And she's, you know, leering over him. And her nails are these five-inch serrated spikes to cut anything they touch. And she's slowly peeling off his clothes and peeling off his jacket, peeling off his shirt. And he's like, ah. <laughs> You know, and you know, she, she, she gets his little blaze and his little desert eagle and throws them aside, you know. She slits his little belt off and then she slits his pants off and ha 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 And then she's got his under ha 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 And she slits his little pants and up pops his little dick and it has a cut 38 on him. Bam! Right in the face. She says, thank God for my cock gun. Look at her. She's got a bullet right between the eyes. Yeah, and there's like smoke coming up from his dick. And it's just awesome. It's awesome. He's like, Tss. And so anyway, then he's like, well, gee, how am I going to get out from these handcuffs? Well, then he just aims his little thing, you know, and he shoots off the handcuff and he's free. You know, calls the coroner and another case solved. So anyway, <clears throat> Then later that night, you know, he's having a drink with his girlfriend, Helen. Hi, Helen. And, you know, they're all there together, and, like, you know, she's just sort of quiet and moody. She's sort of, like, you know, playing with her drink a little and staring out at the great vista out the window. And he, he comes up to her and says, Helen, is something wrong? And she's quiet for a moment and says, Well, Dick, you, you shot someone with your dick, Dick. And he's like, well, yeah, I had to. It was her or me. I was just defending my life, Helen. I was, that's why I'm here tonight. He says, yeah, but, but how does it feel, Dick, to, to kill a woman with your dick? He says, I didn't want to do it. I had to do it, okay? I mean, it was terrible. It was horrible. I, I mean, well, actually, now that you, it never really occurred to me to think of it that way until you brought it up. But now that you brought it up, I'm never going to sleep again. She says, well, I don't know, Dick. I mean, I know you were just doing what you had to do. You have all these little gadgets and everything, but, but I just don't know if I'm going to be comfortable with you because every, you know, every time, you know, I mean, it's just not what it's supposed to be. I mean, every time I, you know, I, I see it, I'm just going to think, I'm just going to think. She says, well, honey, I can take it off. I mean, I'm not going to wear it with you. And then she just burst into tears and he threw his drink out and said, oh, women, and just stalked out and got a whore. <clears throat> so anyway... So there you go. I just thought that was a fun little thing with Dick Racy. And take care, guys.